recording. Hello, people. So my name is uh, Jonathan Feinberg. Uh, I am your substitute teacher for the day. I understood you had the substitute teacher last week as well, and I will be your substitute teacher next week as well, because Simon is at home with his new little baby boy. And uh, yeah, congratulations to him. Uh, my day job, I'm a consultant at this company called Expert Analytics. We do consultancy for the industry. Uh, but before that, I used to actually teach the course in 3331, or for 4331 for, for some of you. And I will say that my day job is uh, the course that I had most use for during my time as a student at the University of Oslo was this course, as in not as a teacher, but one when I took it back in 2008 as 3330. Uh, because it kind of gives you an introduction to all the things that are Python and gives you a little bit of a feel of all the different tools that you might actually encounter in real life. So I was also lucky to be able to kind of help change the course over time. So I've helped add like Git and peer reviewing, testing, uh, documentation, things that are still in this course as far as I understand. And I think that is kind of really useful things to have uh, as part of your uh, degree at the University of Oslo doing computer science, simply because when you get to, um, to, 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 to a job interview and the person on the other side of the table just asks, like, have you ever used Git? And your answer is, no, I have never used Git because that's not something that you've been introduced to at the university. That's actually a little bit embarrassing, maybe for you, but even more so for the university, which job is to make sure that you need to know all the sk skills that you need to know for doing work. and getting into academia for that matter. But the problem is that most of the lectures are academics. So you get all the things you need to become a great academics, and you get a little less of the stuff that are work related. Now, I'm going to talk about regular expression. This is a topic that I kind of chose, like, hey, can I teach this course? And it's a little bit of an odd duckling, because within the framework of, hey, I'm going to have some useful tools that I need to do or use in outside the scope of my university degrees. Uh, it's, it kind of falls between a couple of chairs. And the reason now is if you ask me, hey, do you kind of use regular expression in your programming as in part of your code uh, on my day-to-day -day job? And I breathe Python, and I do everything that is programming-like. So everything that you have in this course is something that I have probably touched based on at some point during my job as a consultant. And the answer to that question is, not really. As in, I don't use the regular expression engine in Python almost at all. Actually, right now, my, my client is this biotech company, and they try to kind of search for kind of amino acids inside strains of protein inside your cells, and that actually do requires a regular expression, but that's kind of the exception. And even in that case, it's just really, really tiny part of what I do. So what's the use of actually having a regular expression? A regular expression, however, is a tool that I use almost every day. I just don't use it in programming. I use it as part of my editor. So I'm going to do a little bit of a digression. I'm going to talk about editors. So back in the early 90s, uh, they kinda, there was this flame war going on that started back then, which was the Emacs versus DI war. And I can see on some of your faces that some of you are already familiar with this flame war, this uh, uh, kind of uh, rivalry, if you like to kind of call it. And the idea was that uh, uh, one editor was better than the other editor, and if you said that this one is the best, then half the people in the room will be your best friend, and the other half of the room will hate you for life. And you cannot make friends across editors. And I imagine that there's still a little bit of that going on, despite the fact that other modern editors have gotten around. Well, not really editors. Nowadays, we don't have editors. The new stuff is usually uh, IDEs. That's, I imagine most of you guys use an IDE, which is fine. But what do you use, Jonathan? I'm happy that you asked. I, I use Vim. <laughs> and my lecture is going to be done in Vim. 
And there's a very, very good reason why I want to do that. That goes into the practice of where I actually use my regular expression. I use it when I code. It's part of my natural kind of process of actually changing code and manipulating code, searching inside my documents, making substitutions. I use regular expression all the time. So, so I thought that if I'm going to do a live demo, I also need to show you how to do it in practice. Now, this is not a tutorial on how to use Vim. I'm just using Vim because that's the tool I use. And if you're going to use a tool, choose whatever you like. And that's, I'm not here to kind of put a kind of dampener on what you should choose as an editor. But for God's sakes, choose something with regular expression. Or for God's sakes, choose something good. <laughs> not that I'm going to actually mention names of what's good and what's not good. Actually, let's do a proper digression here. Let's talk about what is a good editor. So there's this company in the uh, US that um, it's a recruiting company. They do interviews with tech people, and then they assess them, and then they set them up for interviews with bigger companies like Apple. It's called uh, Triple Byte. And the thing is that so many kind of programmers go through these interviews that they start to get the statistics of kind of what do they do, what's their background, what operating system are they using, and they ask the question, what editor is your favorite editor? So amongst the people that interviewed with Triple Byte, this is the distribution of editors. And as you can see, Vim is there at 14%, but you also have stuff like Visual Studio, PyCharm, Emacs. And I can imagine most of you see your editor on that list, unless you are really, really weird and use something like Ed, which I have no idea why you would be using that. But anyway, this is, this is not really an example of anything, because this is in California, in uh, Silicon Valley. But still, it's kind of interesting. But the fun thing is, they also have statistics of if they got the job or not when they were presented to a company. So the, the question we are asking is then, what uh, editor should you be using to actually get through your exam? This is correlation. It's probably the other way around that kind of the technical, the people that are actually good are the ones that are choosing uh, specific editors, not the other way around. But it looks kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> so when we're talking about good and bad editors, do not ever say that you use Eclipse. Keep that a secret. <laughs> anyway, let's get back at the topic at hand. So uh, some of you have computers. Uh, if you want to play around with regular expression as I talk, I really recommend that you go to this website, pythex.org. It has an interactive demo thingy of regular expression, which you can just type away both on both sides and do exactly the same thing as I do and test out your thoughts and theories and it will highlight stuff so you see what's going on. So something to kind of think about. So just quick note, Vim versus NeoVim thingy. Uh, it's just a new version of Vim which includes a couple of features that I'm going to use. So one is the fact that I can do highlighting. Another thing is that I get a terminal edit, a terminal command because I'm going to use the shell. Okay, so we need to start a little bit. Uh, first, uh, I'm going to need to teach you two commands that are very, very specific to Vim, and I need to do that to just give you the basics of what the hell is going on here. So it's going to be cryptic. I'm d I don't expect you to remember this, and you're going to see it multiple times, so it's going to make sense. If I'm going to do a search in my editor, I'm going to write slash, as a forward slash, backslash, V. So down in the left corners, that's where you're going to have your attention. There I say, I'm going to do a search in regular expression. That's Vim's command for doing that. Amex is going to have its own little thing. All the other editors are going to have their own, own little thing. Uh, if you're going to choose your editors, find out how they do regular expression. And if it doesn't do regular expression, it's a bad editor. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so if I'm going to do search, then for example, I can do a search on REG. You can see that I turn highlighting on, so it kind of makes sense that when I say REG down on the left corner, now it highlights the REG. It's the next match. And if I press enter, it will highlight all my matches with REG. That's the first command. Not very complicated. 
Second one is very similar. It's just more signs. So colon percent s slash slash v. How do I remember all these things? I, I kill myself because I learned all the Vim commands. Anyway, this one we can do substitution with. So if I write neo vim, then it highlights neo vim. So you kind of see what's going on, why I'm highlighting it. It's a search tool, but this is also a replace tool. So if I do another slash, NeoVim just disappeared, and I can do substitution. Well, I can't write. Something like that. And then, then you get to the basic of what I'm trying to do. I'm using my editor to do search. I'm using my editor to do substitution. That's all you need to know about Vim as part of this lecture. And now I'm sitting, and I'm feeling very uncomfortable. I usually stand so I can walk around and paste a little nervously. Anyway, we're going to move straight on to a tiny little bit of an example. Uh, I'm going to just kind of throw you into the deep end. I don't expect you to understand anything at this point. We're going to get back to it either at the end of this lecture or more likely next week. But from a kind of just to get a feel of why this is important uh, is the fact that you get into these problems where your code is repetitive and suddenly you notice a systematic error. So in this case, kind of talking about stencils. Stencils is something that uh, I imagine um, uh, Simon loves a lot because that's what he works with. Everything he does involves lots and lots of stencils. So let's say that I'm writing my code and then the second day I realize that, oh shit, all my indices are wrong. It says J comma I. It should be I comma J. So in a normal settings, you would go in and you will start deleting the content, fill it with a, a new content, and then like put in an I here, and then go to the end, and then delete that, and then maybe J minus one, and this should be I, and oh my god, I am so bored, I need to do this another, well, not that many times, but you can imagine the situation. We all get there. The code sometimes need to be repetitive because there is uh, some variations in your code that uh, kind of uh, require it to be repeated many times, despite the fact that they're very, very similar. And you're doing the same thing over and over again. But here I am, and I'm manually changing it. We're programmers, goddamn. Why can't I just program that shit? And so let's try that. So this is the part we, which is not going to be very understandable at this point. But down the left corner, I'm going to do a substitution with regular expression. And then I am going to say something like, and like this, and like this, and gone it is. And now we're going to make new content. And I changed them all. That was a simple command. Took me less than five seconds. And if it was 2,000 of them, it would still be as fast, because I did them all in one single command. You see now why I say that I don't use regular expression as part of my programs, but I goddamn use my regular expression as part of my programming. I use it all the time. And it's these type of things where you kind of say, like, hey, I'm doing a repetitive task. Maybe, perhaps, regular expression is the right way of dealing with it. So undo. This is the J first. And didn't I just do 